right guys, here today's top stories in our What in the World segment. Number one, Murara Kebaso has given a very interesting proposal to the sitting Deputy President Shigadi Gashagwa in the form of a tweet. Now you'll allow me real quick to read this tweet for you because it's quite crucial and I quote, I never kick a man when he is down. Hello Rigadi Gashagwa, you have a missed call from me. I believe you have a lot of information that can help me in my vampire diaries. Would you like to share this information? Question mark. I think the best way to look at this, there was a parable in the Bible, and I'm just paraphrasing here, I'm not giving you word for word. In this parable, Jesus was saying there was a master who had a big feast, and he sent out his servants to go and invite all the rich and important people, probably governors, senators, billionaires, uh, the best musicians, the best dancers, the best of every industry and field that exists to come to that party. But some said they are busy, some said they are held up somewhere. People, you know, people of that caliber always have something. They have a schedule, you know. So the servants came back and everyone came back with an excuse. Hey, they, they are busy, they are this, they are that. No, no one is willing to come. So the master of that party said, go to the streets and call all the beggars, all the, you know, anyone who is just free and is looking like they are just around, they are, they are free, call them to come. And they went and wined and dined. And the door was shut and those others could not make it. This is the situation that Rigadi Gashagwa is in. He has been calling all these leaders. Beti maina kuja, kimani shungwa kuja, nani pale wewe kuja, let us work together. But they are busy. They are busy following the UDA manifesto. Others are busy. They have plans to become governor, senator. Others are busy fighting him. So the DP is in a situation like that master in the parable whereby now he needs to call all those people who are uh, just around and they are free. I don't see why the deputy president cannot work with Morara Kebaso. I don't see why he cannot work with other leaders who are outside the corridors of power. Not even leaders, would-be leaders. People who are on the outside looking in, wanting one day to get there. If you cannot get those who are elected, get those who look like they might one day be elected. Morara Kebaso is one such person. He's a party leader at this young age. I have not seen any political visionary like Morara Kebaso in my lifetime at that young age. Young people like Kasmuel Mukori are going to see Raila Odinga to get an endorsement. Others are starting movements which go nowhere on Twitter. But Morara Kebaso has started Inject Party. He is a party leader. He is on the caliber of Kalonzo Musioka and Wiper. Let's see his exploits in 2027. How many MPs will he have? How many MCAs will he have? You know? The man will be doing so well because if you are part of a party and you are elected, there is what you remit to the party. I don't know if it's 5-6% of your salary. Will he also have a governor? Such a person, Rigadi Gashagwa can accommodate and they can work together. I'm not talking about working together to undermine the government because that looks like the angle of Morara Kebaso is just looking to grow his vampire diaries. But win-win. If he is looking to do more exposés, Rigadi Gashagwa is looking to avenge what happened to him, it will work. These are the random people outside of the corridors of power who Rigadi Gashagwa can work with. By the end of the day, that was just my opinion on that subject matter. Moving on to the second story of the day. PLO Lumumba is now calling the National Assembly a house of butchers with knives. It's a very interesting analogy. I always like listening to this gentleman, but uh, here's a tape. Let's listen in together. They were not interested in the truth. No. That house had taken a position and they are not interested in any iota of truth. You have come here for slaughter and we are going to slaughter you and slaughter him they did. I'm not anticipating what is going to happen in the Senate, but when I see knives being sharpened, when I see Gazette notices being issued almost at night, mm. When I see memos saying that people should not move out of the Republic of Kenya, these are knives being sharpened. The guillotine is being made an efficient machine and somebody's neck is going to be chopped. <laughs> if you ask me, he's 100% spot on. The things that Kenyans are usually passionate about, members of parliament don't give a damn. They don't even care. What are you even talking about? <laughs> Uh, my friend, what are you talking about? You're talking about Adani. We are busy impeaching Gashagwa. This is the one. This is the issue which we will give you public participation. This is the issue which will all show up to parliament. Even those of us who don't show up and never argue anything on the dais of parliament will be there to say yes during the roll call. This is the issue which we'll be talking about on our social media handles. I mean, 
PLO Lumumba is spot on. The priorities of our members of parliament is very misplaced. You would expect something like the finance bill would have received the public participation that it deserves. Something like the Adani issue or the higher education fund or the lack of it thereof would be core business in the National Assembly and people would be getting summoned or threatened with impeachment because of that. But instead, it's something else and PLO Lumumba has read the moment correctly. Now moving on to the final story of the day, this isn't primarily in my docket, but I always say if you do share a video with me, I'll see how to squeeze it in. Now this video is very disheartening. There is a young man, he's a content creator from what I gather in the video, and he has set up a studio. He has his two chairs, there is a curtain backdrop at the back, there is some uh, machinery, probably audio interfaces, XLR cables, lights, and all these other cables that, you know, are found in any typical studio, such as this one. Now, this gentleman walks in and finds a Meoshua. Somebody broke in and took him back to square zero. I'm not even too sure that that is a thief, because if you steal media equipment, selling it is very, very hard. Unless you're selling it for cheap, you go sell a microphone at 500 because you need quick money. It looks to me like it's more like revenge. Somebody had a dispute with him, Wakampangia, to bring him down completely. The guy is even holding back tears as recording. Either way, here's a tip. Ini madarau. Kai, taina ma. Mmetubebea vitu zote. Mixer. Kuna mic zilikuwa hapa. Mmebeba zote. Kulikuwa na tripod. Lights. Hapa naona. Mmefunguanisha. Mmebeba kibo zote zilikuwa hapo. Gaina amuona. Ngo na aona tu. Tunafanya bidii. Makuta mlango imefunguliwa. Nataka kuna kufuli nimepata hapo. Hii ni fungu yangu nilikuwa nimeweka hapo. Nilikuwa na kate na hapo. Zimeenda zote. Nilikuwa tunafanyia interview hapo. Pani kitchen. Yana ametoanisha pia hapa. Amechukua kibo zote. Nilikuwa huko. Akatubebea jawi ya kuchemsha kahawa. Ndanyamu wana Ndanyamu kuuliza hakuna mtu walisikia Kama unajua ni wewe ulifanya hivyo tawadhali tu Tawadhali tu Tumefanya bidi sana Tuitoka Tuitoka huku Chani waonye Leoi Tuitoka hapo Kwa hizo red user za kushika nini Za kuopaliti hivyo Hadi tukaweka studio Hadi kwa hapi yengi Hadi hapo Tukatoka hapo Kisi tumejaribu kidogo, alafu sasa tumerudi nyuma. Ano, studio tikuwa tuna host. Sayo na. And like I always say, we spend so much time calling the leaders in this country thieves. A majority of them very well could be. But my personal take is that a majority of Kenyans, 20% are hardcore thieves. 70% can become thieves in the right way situations today they are not but if you put them and give them the right situation and environment they will steal we saw salim swale moving from citizen to go be in a scandal in mudavadi's office i don't believe he's a thief primarily like the hardcore 20 percent but given a chance you know how it went down it's only 10 percent who are good people so in this country watch your six don't just think your government no easy. your contractor could be a thief your neighbor could be a thief your friend could be a thief. They've been monitoring him. They know he leaves this studio by 8. Or they have a lookout. Yeah, he has left. All right. Let's move in. Let's take his stuff. So, like I said, guys, always be careful out there. Any business dealing you do, sign a contract. You never trust anybody. I had my catalytic converter stolen by a mechanic I trust. And I have many other stories of theft by people I trusted. So, inchi ka chonjo. Utaoshwa na serikali, uoshwe na jirani. <laughs> it's always good to be safe. At the end of the day, guys, uh, that's all I had for you today in the What in the World segment. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. And WhatsApp me from time to time. I like to hear from uh, you guys. And also, let me know what other topic you'd like. 
to have me cover in the what in the world segment i'll always do my best to squeeze it in and with that guys if you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david Ofula. hit the subscribe button you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.